I've had the car for four years as a bit of a club sprint car. Had a bunch of different engines in it. Um, started hanging out with some of the guys from the series, did my OLT, and then actually watched um, an August round in at Sandown. And they're all getting my ear, just being like, put an M20 in, put an M20 in, just come. The next day, bought an M20 and started building the cart to the spec. As I was building, Dad's like, oh, well, what am I going to drive? And then we bought this one pre-made. So pre-built, um, tied it up a little bit, and uh, yeah, got them both ready for round one March, which was actually here at the start of the year. I'm leading for the Rookie Championship. Uh, I but think I've it's, got friends so I think do the hip and shoulder, bump him off, I could win. I think it's, I think it's 14 points. Um, I mean, anything can happen in the one hour, really. Um, we're looking forward to it. Um, one of the other competitors, also named Simons, closely chasing behind. The more experienced guys, they find seconds on us where we don't know where they are yet. And um, But you know, like Brian Burke was saying that he has literally done hundreds of laps around here. So he's got entry points that we don't know about. You know, There are finesses, and this is a really technical circuit. Um, you know, It's a bit more even on a, a circuit like Phillip Island, um, but here it's very yeah. technical. We, we get spread out a bit. Technique is exposed if you just, you know, it's a little, like brake markers and turn in points are so critical. Um, yeah, keeping momentum of the car, especially with not a whole lot of power. If you lose a little bit of momentum through the back of the circuit, you pay like two seconds through the later half, the faster section. So, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. But, um, oh, the, uh, no, the, like, I find that especially in a first year of driving, you get a rapid increase until you get to sort of like a, a flattening out point and then you've got to start to look and be like, okay, how can we set the car up better? What can I physically do to change? So I feel like just towards the end of the year now, I've hit that point where like I've had all of my increase and all of my, you know, rapid knocking off seconds. And now it's just about fine tuning, you know, the little details. It's time for the first race of the final round of the BMW E30 Championship, proudly brought to you by Garagistic. I'm joined by Rory Plant in commentary here as we take a look at these guys going down into turn one and a good field of cars all fighting for position. Great start there by Jeremy Payne, the series leader, and uh, Brian Burke's fallen into the clutches of Jesse Bryan, who's uh, taken second place as they battle over the hill into turn three. Yeah, he's going to be sitting down in third place, and that's not great for his championship points. He needs a few more if he wants to be able to leap from Alex Drury and get himself up into second, which is to actually possible with how the point structure is this weekend. Yeah, now we see Jer uh, Simon Leach on board with him. He's had a, got a bit of a fuel leak at this early stage, so it's very slippy around there and uh, loses a place and then has to do a fighting comeback later in the race. Yeah, he's going to have a few dramas. Unfortunately for him, of course, an hour endurance race on Saturday and Sunday here for the drivers. A big final weekend of racing on board with Alex Jory, a little bit further down the field in fourth place than he would like to be, no doubt. He wants to be able to pick up a few more of those victories we've seen him get over the last couple of years. Yeah, he's been very fast, Alex Jory, over the last couple of years. This is his uh, fourth car this year, unfortunately, after some earlier issues. But uh, this one's a keeper down from Darwin, as we see. Brian Burke going around the outside on <laughs> Jesse Bryan. Can he stick it on the track? Yes, he can. But now Alex Jory is going to sneak through in the final corner and uh, take that third place away. So Brian Burke from second down into fourth. He'll be very disappointed with that. And he'll have to mount a recovery drive of his own. You'd be forgiven for thinking that they thought this was a sprint race in the early stages. Everybody fighting for position as around the outside goes Simon Schiff to also relegate Burke back to another position. I tell you what, Brian Burke will be wondering what happened at the start of this race. A great qualifying session and now all of a sudden he's got all that work to do again. Don't get me wrong though, uh, Brian Burke will absolutely relish the challenge ahead. He's a veteran, he's very experienced around this track and in these cars and uh, got a few younger drivers ahead. Uh, Simon Schiff looking likely to take the uh, rookie championship, uh, so Brian Burke will want to show him a thing or two and uh, mount a bit of a recovery. So here they go, through the S's now, Simon Schiff in that beautiful Red Rocket Racing number 55. and. Brian Burke driving smoothly, going to try and go around the outside, take a higher line and get a better exit. He's definitely using some alternate lines, isn't he? Another thing to, uh, of interest here is Simon Schiff and the team down there, they did a lot of work on Facebook and uh, other websites as well to show the build of one of these cars. It was really interesting to follow that as they did the reveal and the interesting colour scheme that they've decided to put on it. It's Absolutely. almost like a tiger that's out there with gold stripes. Yeah, stunning cars. Mm. As we see, Alex Jory have a crack now at uh, Jesse Bryan. So uh, this has given 
Jeremy Payne, plenty of road uh, in front and behind him, but uh, these battle packs are looking fantastic. As we see, Alex Jory on the inside. Very respectful racing by these guys. That's fantastic to watch. He showed the nose there, and Jesse Bryan just decided to close the door on him, but gently didn't slam it shut. Just gave him enough room, but took the incentive away, which is all you need to do in one of these E30s to show that you know the gap's not there. Sit behind him. Absolutely, but he's uh, not letting up Jory. He'll be uh, keen to have another crack down past the uh, sweeper and into turn seven. And we also see further behind, Simon Schiff is still being uh, hassled by Brian Burke around the We've got four cars line astern here battling for position. The back two are sort of in their own argument, dropping away from the front two. But here we go, Burke to the inside. He should be able to get the move done late under brakes onto the back section of the circuit and takes the position away. So he's got one back after taking three steps backwards yep. of the start. Beautiful clean overtake as we see another battle here between Alex Jory and Jesse Bryan around the final corner. And a, a move into the first few corners. Oh, look how close he is onto the straight. Great driving. Pulls out of the draft. Now it's a matter of shifting the gears and seeing if he can get by. And it looks like he's going to do it around the outside as well. That's pretty impressive. Still uh, great driving again between those two. This time in uh, alternative positions. But now Brian Burke's got his eyes on. He'll be uh, looking to have a crack down the inside at turn three. Four wide in the three. How good's that? Line of turn racing from these BMW E30s. As we go down into turn four. And Brian Burke through for the position. So now he's back up in the third place. Of course, we've got to thank Garagistic for their support of the round and the championship. It's been a great season to have them on board yet again. Absolutely, they've been fantastic, characteristic, and uh, it's great to see such great racing to uh, celebrate their support. So, uh, Brian Burke, another clean overtake. Jesse Bryan fighting it out, but leaving just enough space, and now he's lucky on the battle with Simon with Chiff. As uh, Brian Burke <laughs> now lines up Alex Jory. What can he do from here? I was going to say, imagine you're any one of these four drivers, and the moment it shifts, you're battling with somebody else. You've got to try to learn their lines, learn their braking, understand what's happening on the track. <laughs> Burke starts to close that gap. He's applying the pressure to Alex Jory, but he's going to need to do a lot more to be able to get past. Absolutely. And speaking of learning, Alex Jory is unfamiliar with this car. As I said, mm. he's had some dramas with another vehicle earlier in the year, and uh, this one he's just got down from Darwin, so a new car for Alex Jory. This one's a keeper. It's already orange, so his usual orange and black theme isn't uh, isn't harmed with this new vehicle, but uh, he's just getting a handle on it. The handling's not where he, quite where he wants it, but as always, He's absolutely fast and going for it. He's going to be able to pick up the championship points he needs if you can hold Brian Burke behind. So this is also a battle for second in the championship between these two as it stands. So there's a lot on the line. Absolutely. And both those guys finished in uh, second and third last year. Um, <laughs> Alex Jory was leading just before the final yeah. round, which he couldn't complete. And uh, Chris Bell took the championship, of course. Oh. And, uh, until this race, the current lap record holder with a uh, one minute. 37.3, so we'll see what uh, Jeremy Payne can say about that later he's, in this race. I was going to say, he's put the foot down out in front and absolutely opened a massive gap on these guys. He's able to just back off if he wants to and conserve that car home, but knowing Jeremy if Payne, he wants he to. probably was, and if he wants to, and he oh, probably doesn't want to. I think not. An hour around Winter Motor Raceway, sounds like it would be an easy thing in one of these cars. It's, oh no, jury. He's gone wide out of the first uh, hairpin, and that's going to give Burke the run. He was looking like he could make the move there because he had the pace for the last couple of laps. And he's just forcing his He's not letting him get away. Alex Jory keeps the foot in it, and he's really going to have to... Uh... It was pretty brave not to get the foot out of it once you hit the dirt there. Like, that is the Alex around. Jory style. Great, uh, great fast driver of these cars. You can see Brian Burke just looking in the rear view mirror, making sure he's opening the gap. He'll now try to get his head down and drive away. Simon Leach having those fuel issues. I think he's done a tour of the pit lane already just to sort of figure it out, but or maybe not. He's just dropped a long Back. It seems the, like I think the fuel have... has dropped down enough, yeah. and now he's just getting his own head down and really yeah. uh, trying to uh, catch up onto uh, the cars who have made a bit of ground ahead. And uh, he's driven very well this weekend, uh, Simon Leach, in that dirty sounding 51 car. So uh, great to see he's, uh, he's been <laughs> I tell you what, these E30s look good in just the traditional white and black, don't they? It really works for the colour bar body shape of the car. Absolutely. Great looking cars, great sounding and really great to drive, especially around a track like this at Winton with uh, shorter straights, um, some complex twisty bits and uh, really good test for the drivers, especially in a longer race where you've got to concentrate. 
and you get to be able to race some great tracks as well down in Victoria, Sandown, Phillip Island, here at Winton Endurance Racing, and it's a spec sort of formula as well, which means you can get in and be able to race on a loving playing field. Absolutely, and it was our first visit to Tail and Bend this year, mm -hmm. a fantastic occasion there. Unfortunately, a few cars came unstuck and suffered some damage, but uh, great experience. <laughs> speak highly enough about that track and they're all dying to get back. And if you want to find out more about the BMW E30 Racing Championship, make sure to check out E30 Racing on Facebook as we go on board with Jeremy Payne in the Avis car. He's working his way towards the finish of this race. Let's just take a ride on board with him though as he's put the pedal down and he's trying to set some fast laps. Going further back though and have a look at this, you've got shifts starting to put pressure on Jesse Bryan. So as we come towards the closing stage of this race and out in front Jeremy Payne who we were just on board with sounded absolutely excellent. You can see he's pushing, he's setting faster and faster lap time so we'll have to keep an eye on it as we come towards the close of this race. Temperature decreasing at Winter Motor Raceway which should be able to produce a good lap time. What we can see now is Jesse Bryan struggling with some cramping out in that car and uh, the Makulu car of Jesse Bryan's being chased down by last round's Makulu driver of the round, Simon Schiff, who's come on in leaps and bounds this year and uh, he's really applying the blowtorch to Jesse Bryan here, who's uh, going to be pretty uncomfortable in that car as we head towards the end of that 60 minute stint. Tell you what, maybe he's not happy that they handed out that award last round and gave even more incentive to Schiff to chase him down in the Red Rocket car. Absolutely. He's making light work of it at the moment. And it's not what you want to see right when you come towards the end of an hour endurance race. Somebody right up in your mirror, looking left, looking right, trying to nudge past. It gives you just that little bit extra brain activity that you probably don't need. That's exactly what we want in the commentary box. <laughs> it's great it, to watch. Yeah. Now, what can Simon Schiff do down into turn three, the best overtaking spot on the track? Oh. Having a dive. Oh no, and he's, he's locked up and avoids hitting Jesse Bryan. Again, great driving from that pair. That's fantastic to watch. He decided to pull out of it, which was the better decision right there because there would have been contact if they both had charged in like they were. Jesse Bryan, I think, left it as late as he could to turn in. He knew he was there, but at some point you just have to turn and follow the racetrack. You can't do any more. But good driving from the pair of them. Absolutely. Shift sitting in behind. Last year's rookie champion, Jesse Bryan, being uh, monstered by the current year likely rookie champion himself, Simon Schiff. Goes to show though that in this category it's starting to get tighter and tighter if you want any of those championships. You have to work harder, you have to be on your game all season, make sure that you're driving well and not have any contact and you should be able to pick it up. But Absolutely. Lots Re to play for. Reliability and, uh, mm. and good points finishes is the, the name of the game is uh, Jeremy Payne putting on an absolute masterclass comes up go. to lap these, uh, these runners. Oh. Gets down the inside, they both give him plenty of room as we come towards the finish of this race in the Garagistic E30 Racing Championship. Final round here at Winton Motor Raceway. Schiff is applying the pressure, trying to get past. He doesn't have very long left to do it though, so he's going to have to try to get the job done or sit in behind and wait for the next race to try to jump him off the line or something similar, I guess. Absolutely. So this is the uh, the battle for fourth with mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Payne now lapping these guys and uh, Brian Burke recovered from down to fifth up, in, up back into second. Alex Jory cruising along in third now. As Here we go. Jeremy Payne comes across the line and uh, you won't believe this, but he has done on his final lap a 
brand new lap record of 1 minute 37.01. Absolutely brilliant. As we take a look at the result there, Payne, Lee, Tame, Burke and Alex Jory rounding out your top three for the first race from the final round of the Garagistic BMW E30 Championship. It's time for the final race of the season for the 2019 Garagistic BMW Drivers' Cup here at Winton Motor Raceway. Rory Plant still in the commentary box to review all of the action. Getting away well, Brian Burke now trying to make the battle to Jeremy Payne. Yeah, he's, uh, Jeremy Payne's got the uh, lead, but Brian Burke right on his bumper this time, so that'll be a great battle. Now Payne has pretty much got the championship sewn away here, even if he doesn't finish this race he'll come home with enough points and scrape it in if he has to, but he will be able to stamp his authority on the championship no doubt and take another race victory. Absolutely, he's uh, driven brilliantly all year and now we get to watch it from uh, Brian Burke on board into the sweeper. How good is it? Well, 37 laps into a race on a hot day down at Winton and he still sets the fastest lap right at the end. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be pushing for it again in this race. Absolutely, yes. He broke a two-year-old uh, record from Chris Bell on, on the, when the track was newly resurfaced. But, uh, yep, he owns it now. He's uh, ticking all the boxes this year as we see uh, Brian Burke follow him round and Jesse Bryan hanging on there in third with Alex Jory putting some pressure on in fourth. Alex Jory's been the one to slip back at the start of this race. He could not get the launch away from the line that he probably would have liked to have got. But Jesse Bryan showing how, after we spoke about in the first race, you go from being a rookie to fighting for the outright honours in just a season. Um, he's looking for a spot on the podium in the final race of the year. Absolutely. As we uh, drop back and see the, uh, the Battle of the Simons. So Simon Leach, this time ahead of Simon Schiff in the 55 Red Rocket Racing Car. A great battle here between two rookies with uh, Simon Leach in the box seat to get the uh, Rookie Championship of 2019. And, uh, Simon Leach driving really well uh, today. A great recovery drive in race one after the fuel issue. He's driving really well and uh, great, uh, great to get a place ahead of uh, Simon Schiff. And he's managed to get himself sorted with that issue between races. Of course, got overnight to be able to look into it and figure out what the problem was and sort himself out. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, not as much fuel in the car, I think, is the, uh, <laughs> the basic solution to that one. So, uh, yep, he's under control. He's not sliding around all over the place. Mm. And uh, he'll be uh, really enjoying some extra seat time, especially uh, ahead of his great friend there, as we now see Jesse Bryan holding off Alex Jury coming on at the front straight. Now this will be a real test for Jesse Bryan now because Alex Jory is one of those campaigners who can find his way past. We saw it in race one, we've seen it in previous seasons, he's been able to just push his way through, um, not push, but you know, get, find the gap, work on somebody and get past. So now Bryan, you can see, look at that, through turn two, he's sliding the car, he's feeling the pressure, he's upped his game a little bit to try to keep this car behind. Yeah, great aggressive driving, but uh, very respectful these guys in this, uh, in this race and this weekend, it's great to watch. sliding around a little bit there as they come down the hill so obviously trying to push the cars as hard as they possibly can to get this position done at the moment in the early stages of this race it really is about finding yourself track position so you can settle into a rhythm yeah, you want to get a rhythm as soon as possible it's very tricky with the traffic around you and a full tank of fuel and uh, and cooler and under pressure tires so yeah. uh, really good good work from these guys hanging on to those cars and putting on a great oh. show Jory around wow. the outside as uh, Jesse Bryan's being <laughs> defensive around the final two corners, but uh, that might give Jory a better exit heading into the uh, turn one, two complex. He's definitely throwing everything at Bryan at the moment and showing that he is able to stand up there and run with these guys. Bryan is holding him behind. This is certainly probably as a bit of notice for the 2020 championship. I think he'll be one to watch out for. Absolutely, yeah. He's been driving very fast this year. It's been great to see. He actually had a really good crack at uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Payne at uh, Tail and Bend earlier in the year, so he's been driving really well. How's the 2020 season shaping up for you guys as well? Got the calendar coming out soon, sorting out how the things are going to be run? Yeah, we're juggling a few things. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, work hopefully with the AMRS and the uh, Victorian uh, State Circuit Racing Championship. So yep. we haven't resolved anything yet, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to another great season and uh, seeing some of the rookies really step up the way yep. that Jesse Bryan has this year and uh, a few other campaigners getting a few more races in the uh, into the season. So uh, looking forward to it. 
no doubt it's going to be a great championship once it comes together. We get to visit some impressive tracks in these cars and you can race them all around the country as well. And as we go here down the inside, Jory's going to get the position. Brian gives him room and that is a pass for position undertaken there. Great racing, great driving, great to watch. That's fantastic. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Jesse Brian will be keen to uh, hang on to the back of, back of him and uh, yeah. get some good points. I think I saw him give a little thumbs up as they came out of turn four. So he's obviously enjoying it. These guys, of course, you get out of the car and you're all garaged together. You have a little bit of a chat afterwards and, and just enjoy your weekend away racing. Absolutely. Nothing more enjoyable than uh, racing a yeah. car, especially one of these cars around a track like this. I was going to say, these cars throw you back to some of the glory days of touring car racing worldwide, of course. An epitome car for everybody out there, a BMW, to be able to race it and race it throttle as it comes through. Absolutely. <laughs> This battle's really energised. Yeah. Simon Leach, he's got the he's headlights on. He's driving brilliantly, brilliantly this weekend, and uh, obviously tussling together. The uh, Brian and Jory cars have slipped back into his uh, into his uh, forward vision there, and he's really oh. going to have a go here. He's pushing hard, isn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> late on the brakes in the four, very late into the first hairpin at seven, and now he's going to try to work his way around the gum tree and see if he can get onto the back. Jesse Brian. Well, he may have been giving a thumbs up a minute ago for that battle. I don't think really he wanted to go straight into another one. It was time to get your head down and follow Alex Drury and learn some of the lines and some of the pace of how you can do it around this circuit. Absolutely, yeah. It's one battle to another, which is yeah. uh, great to see. And yeah, Simon Leach, a great recovery drive in the, uh, the first race yesterday. And uh, this weekend, he's just been magnificent, getting faster and faster times and getting more comfortable in the car and uh, <laughs> really putting some other drivers on those. It's a great to see. Yeah, we'll show what he can do, especially in this race, setting some good lap times as well right in amongst the mix so plenty to play for and I think it's a good representation of what's to come next year as these cars start to come closer together as everyone gets themselves around them and oh no Brian though he's gone off he's trying to slide to bring that car to a hold I wonder if he's had some he's obviously had some sort of mechanical drum with that car yeah it looks like brakes coming out of the sweeper into uh, Penrite that's a scary place to be losing brakes so uh, oh Disappointed, but yeah. uh, I'm hope, hope, sure he's relieved actually to be uh, stopping just short of that. So. Oh, uh, his, his battle pack partner, <laughs> Alex Jury, comes into the pits. It's all fallen apart in that battle. They've just handed the two positions to Simon Leach here, as easy as you like. Maybe it's the way he was storming towards them and so, uh, decided to pull out. Christmas has come early for yeah. uh, Simon Leach, but uh, unfortunately what goes up must come down because uh, the news from uh, the control tower is that Simon Leach has a 10 second penalty that he needs to contend with. I'm not sure if he knows that in the car, but uh, a start line infringement as well as a uh, possibly a jump start as well gives him a 10 second penalty and his uh, fellow Simon, Simon Schiff in the Red Rocket Racing 55 car has a five second penalty for uh, only one of those uh, indiscretions. So uh, he's got a bit of time to make up. No good moment goes unpunished as we come towards the end of this race. So Schiff needs to stay within five seconds of Leach to be able to take third place in the race, get himself a trophy and a podium result in this final round of the Garagistic BMW Drivers' Cup. So interesting way we're sort of having a battle of the lap times as we come towards the end of this race as oh big lock up for Schiff. He's obviously pushing hard. I'd He's say someone's hard. told him from the pit wall. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> destroyed the this uh, lap right at the start unfortunately <laughs> for him but uh, no, he'll keep pushing he'll keep getting more and more familiar with the car oh Paul Schiff the other red rocket racing car has gone <laughs> wide at turn 10 and uh, oh oh geez massive tank slapper across the middle of the track <laughs> and uh, waves to his son Simon Schiff and uh, he'll uh, I think I think the car's okay he'll just uh, put on a bit of a show for the yeah. control tower and the fans and get motoring again. I think when they get back to the garage, Simon might be asking, who are you really working for there? Because yeah, you had to slow that. down to avoid that. I'm trying to chase Simon Leach, so yeah. not ideal. But isn't that a cool presentation of a car as well? They really like the reflective vinyl on these two cars. Absolutely. It's a great looking car, and mm. uh, it's been great to have Paul Schiff in the series this year. He's uh, great fun in the paddock and uh, really good for the series. So I uh, love having Paul on track. <laughs> definitely notice his car as we take a look at our leader Jeremy Payne he has driven away we haven't seen much of him because from the very beginning he just put his head down drove away from the rest of the guys but here we go on to the final lap of the 2019 championship proudly brought to you by Garagistic they've been a huge supporter of V30 racing in Australia and I know the guys love having them on board plenty of good parts you can get out of the states from those guys absolutely and also we'd like to thank Traction Tires and Yokohama Motorsport Australia for their support the, uh, the great uh, rubber that we race on in this series and uh, look Jeremy Payne 
absolutely a class above once again. So after breaking a two-year-old lap record yesterday, he's now blitzed it again and done a 136.68. So that is seriously fast in these cars around this track. So Jeremy Payne absolutely uh, having a, a glorious year apart from a gearbox issue at uh, Sandown. He has won every round. He's been uh, a class above and uh, a, a worthy champion in uh, 2019. Absolutely dominant performance this year and he puts the field on notice that yet again he is one to beat here at Winton as he comes and takes the chequered flag for the final race of the Garagistic BMW Drivers Cup for 2019. You can see there the results. Brian, Jeremy oh, Payne leads yeah. home Brian Burke, Simon Schiff, Simon Leach, Paul Schiff, Rory Payne, Eric Story and Jesse Bryan rounding out your field. We caught up with the victors and the champion to get their thoughts after the round. Yeah, it's... Uh Today was pretty good. The whole weekend's been fantastic. The car was really hooked up and it's been good. So second season and I'm pretty stoked. Had one bad round, the rest of the rounds this season were fantastic. So had a lot of fun. Went to some good uh, new tracks, especially the bend and yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, planning on coming back and having a bit more fun. So it's a good group of people in this category. Got some good sponsors and it's just been a great year.